Hey guys, this is Kate from What Kate Ate, and today I'm going to be talking all about digestive health and what causes acid reflux and heartburn. I'm super excited to talk about this topic because we're getting to talk about the physiology and the anatomy of the digestive system and proper function. So in order to understand what causes acid reflux and heartburn, we need to talk about the way that the digestive system is supposed to properly function. Since all of this occurs in the upper section of the gastrointestinal system, we're only going to be talking about the brain, the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, and some of the sphincters that are involved in this first part of the digestive process. So, first thing to understand is that digestion starts in the brain. Crazy, right? You guys probably thought it started in your mouth. It doesn't. It starts in your brain. So if we're not in this parasympathetic state, which is our rest and digest state, a whole host of things can go wrong with our digestive system. So it's imperative that you are in a rest and digest state because your brain has to signal to our salivary glands and to our liver, our gallbladder, our pancreas, and our parietal cells in our stomach to release hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. There's so many different digestive enzymes. And these things, the stomach acid and these enzymes, are extremely important for the proper breakdown on a chemical level of all of our foods in our stomach. And it is one of the very first, most important parts of digestion. And so if we're in this rest and digest state, our brain is signaling to our salivary glands and all of our organs, and it's creating all of these different chemicals to prepare the body to digest our food. And so after that, we start eating our food, our salivary amylase, our saliva in our mouth, our first digestive enzyme starts to break down food chemically. And uh, as we're chewing our food, our brain is continuing to send signals to all of our different organs that there is food coming. We need to keep preparing for this. We need to start creating higher amounts of hydrochloric acid and enzymes to prepare for all of the food that is coming. And so after we've chewed everything very well, everything goes down through the esophagus and into the stomach and all of the different chemicals are in there just ready to have a freaking party and break down all of our food so that when it continues on throughout the rest of the digestive tract past the stomach, Everything is in the most perfect form to be digested and absorbed and assimilated into our body for all the nutrients that we need. So that's the ideal situation. And now let's talk about what goes wrong and what causes acid reflux and heartburn. So number one, the brain. If we're not in a parasympathetic state, if we're in a sympathetic state, we're stressed out, we're running around, we're eating food, standing up. We're thinking about all these stressful things while we're eating our meal. We're watching TV while we're eating our meal. We're talking to someone. We're texting someone. Any of the distractions that might be going on while we're eating, we are likely not in a parasympathetic state. And when we are not in this state, the brain does not properly signal to our saliva glands and to the rest of the digestive system to properly create all of these enzymes and proper amounts of hydrochloric acid to chemically break down our foods. So number one, this is where the dysfunction starts. Number two, when everything comes down, well, actually, let's back up for a second because I bet if you're walking around eating your food, you're probably not chewing your food enough. That's the next thing. We need to make sure that we are chewing our food enough and breaking it down so when it gets to the stomach, it's already ready to be broken down chemically. Most people do not chew their food enough. It's said that you are supposed to chew your food 30 times. 30 little chomps before you swallow anything. So keep that in mind as well. So brain, parasympathetic state, chewing your food, those are the first two things. Number three, and this is kind of out of our control at this point, is if we're in this stressed out state, we didn't chew our food enough, the stomach is like, I'm not ready for all of this food, food's gonna hit the stomach and it's gonna be like, what the heck do we do with all of this stuff? We weren't ready for this. And so then the whole process starts to get rushed. The body's trying to create all this hydrochloric acid and all of these enzymes, and it's just not enough. And this is where our sphincters come into action and come into this whole part of the story. So our sphincters, which is such a fun word to say, there's multiple sphincters throughout the entire digestive tract. You can kind of think of them as like little gates, little doors that open up to allow the different parts of digestion to continue on. And all of these sphincters have a very specific amount of like different things that they're looking for before they will open their door to allow 
the contents of our food to go to the different parts of digestion, if that makes sense. So the sphincters that we're concerned about, that we're going to talk about here, that cause acid reflux and are related to heartburn and all these things, are the sphincter that sits on top of the stomach and the sphincter that sits on the bottom of the stomach. So the sphincter on the bottom of the stomach opens in a downward direction. It doesn't open upward, it only opens downward. And in fact, all of the other sphincters throughout the entire digestive tract, except for the one on top of the stomach, only open in a downward progression. And so the sphincter on top of the stomach opens up and down. It's really special. It's got multiple different functions. And the reason why the sphincter opens upward and downward is so that if there's any air in the stomach, it can open up, allow us to burp. And if we eat something that's like real freaking nasty, that's going to make us extremely sick and is full of a bunch of crap, it'll open up so we can get rid of the contents of the stomach so that we can throw up and vomit and all of those wonderful things that everyone hates doing. But it's extremely purposeful and we're just created this way. It's really fascinating how the body is made this way. And so when it comes to acid reflux and heartburn, if we aren't in a parasympathetic state, if we didn't chew our food enough, and then all of a sudden we have all this food in the stomach, there's not enough hydrochloric acid, there's not enough enzymes to break down that food, what ends up happening is it's kind of like if you were to take a bunch of food, put it into a blender, blend it for a few seconds, and then spit in it, put the lid on and just let it sit there, what is it going to do? It's going to ferment, it's going to expand, it's going to do all these weird things, and that's essentially what's happening inside of the stomach when we don't have enough hydrochloric acid and we don't have enough digestive enzymes. Our food is not going to get chemically broken down. And the reason why this is an issue is because the sphincter at the bottom of the stomach will not open its door and allow things to continue onto the small intestine for food to be absorbed until the pH of the stomach hits about a 1.5, which is insanely acidic. Acidic. It's almost as acidic. You can kind of think of it as like, if you were to take the contents of the stomach out at this point in optimal digestion at a 1.5 pH, and you drop that on the ground, it would burn a hole in your floor. It's extremely acidic. And our stomachs are built to withstand this level of acidity. So let's back up for a second. If our food is not properly breaking down in the stomach, there's a lack of hydrochloric acid, there's a lack of digestive enzymes, the bottom sphincter in the stomach is like, nah, bitch, you're not at the right pH. Get your shit together. I'm not allowing you to pass through this part. There's going to be a lot of pressure building up. And that's when we get bloated we get distended, we get uncomfortable, we get overly full, even though we haven't really eaten that much. Do you guys ever go from like being absolutely starving, you start eating and you're like, oh my God, I'm so full. This just doesn't make any sense. This is why you're eating too fast. Your body is not ready for it. And oftentimes what happens is we get acid reflux and we get heartburn. And so this whole process happens because we get this buildup of pressure. The only sphincter that will allow that pressure to release is the sphincter on top of the stomach. And so in, an, in a means to just try to give you some relief, it opens up a little bit. And there just happens to be low levels of hydrochloric acid in the mix of all of the different food contents that are in there. And so we get that push up of the contents of the stomach into the esophagus and it burns because the esophagus is not created the same way the stomach is. It is not built to withstand any acid beyond like that of a lemon or some kombucha or apple cider vinegar. And even then those foods still burn sometimes. And so when we think about this whole process, it makes sense that in order to get rid of or to support or to get relief from acid reflux or from heartburn, we need to ensure that there's enough hydrochloric acid and that there's enough digestive enzymes in the stomach so that we can have proper digestion so that we're not experiencing these things. And so ways that you can go about addressing this on your own at home is you can take a digestive enzyme before meals, you can take some hydrochloric acid tablets before meals, you can buy both of these things at most health food stores. If you have any questions about that, feel free to leave a comment, send me a DM, whatever is most helpful to you to reach out to me, feel free to do so. The other thing that you can do if you do not want to take supplements, because I know some people are just can't do the pill thing, can't do the supplement thing, don't want to spend the money on it. I totally get it. What you can do is you can actually take the juice of one lemon, squeeze it into a glass, and put about four ounces of room temperature or slightly warm water. Drink that before a meal. Or you can also drink this when you're feeling bloated and distended and uncomfortable and experiencing acid reflux. And this, the enzymes naturally that are occurring in the lemon and the acid that is naturally occurring in that lemon will help to support 
your body to create more hydrochloric acid and more enzymes to properly chemically break down that food, get rid of the bloating, get rid of the discomfort, and help give you relief. Aside from lemons, you can also use a half to a full tablespoon of raw apple cider vinegar. I would suggest getting apple cider vinegar that has the mother. Um, a lot of you might be like, what is the mother? Apple cider has a mother? This is essentially just parts of the strains of bacteria that were the first part of fermentation of creating the apple cider vinegar. So apple, apple cider vinegar is actually a fermented product and this fermentation process creates a lot of enzymes, probiotics, and different acids that are really helpful for digestion and so many other things for health. So lemons, apple cider vinegar, hydrochloric acid, and digestive enzymes. These are going to be some things that will be really helpful for you if you're experiencing acid reflux or heartburn at any capacity. If you guys have any questions for me about this, please reach out. Again, my name is Kate and I have the website and blog and, ins and Instagram of whatkateate.com. Feel free to reach out and ask me any questions if you have them and I will catch you guys next time for my next video. Oh, 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 oh,